Hello everyone and welcome to this YouTube video where I'm gonna give you my update on Bitcoin, Ethereum and I will also include one altcoin that I know has been hyped recently and I will look for a setup. So uh, during this video I'm gonna give you my perspective on what I'm looking at next. I want to prepare you for the week ahead to make profits alongside me and I will also pass along some insights on how I'm reading context, how I'm entering my trades and what exactly I am looking at. So on Bitcoin, I have created this context folder. So for me, it's always important before I look at an actual entry, I need to know where is price coming from and where is price trying to head towards. So what we can see here is that on this drop into the 50,000 area, Bitcoin actually hit some pretty amazing support. So if we look at a channel connecting this previous all-time high range, so connecting these two highs and this low, we can see that this old channel has been respected perfectly. So we got this retest here for a nice rejection, then we reclaimed this old channel and on this drop into the 50,000 area, that was actually the low of this previous channel being respected perfectly. And there is a saying to never delete a well-respected channel and we can see that here. So that has been perfectly well-respected. On top of that, we had this anchored VWAP. I myself always like to look at anchored VWAPs for the latest impulses. Okay, so here we can see that is where this Im impulse of Bitcoin started. It started around 23,000. So I'm anchoring my anchored VWAP down here and we can see it's been respected perfectly. So that was the first proper retest for a nice bounce. We got another confirmation here for this latest impulse in price. There's another thing I always like to look at and people inside Chart Champions already know that. And this is the previous range value area highs and value area lows. So let me share this um, down here first. So we obviously had this all time high range. We lost it, we all know that. And then we had this previous range value area low. This has been respected or has been retested perfectly over here. So we can see that first rejection, 20% decline. Another rejection, another retest, 23% drop from this level. Then, however, we got accepted back into this previous range value area low, got the full value rotation, even broke out of this previous range value area high. And here we respected and retested this previous range value area high perfectly. So when looking at this, I always have to ask myself, what is price trying to do here? And obviously what price is trying to do here is to move higher we cannot get any acceptance below this 50,000 price area. We can see this by simply looking at candle closes. So there was the first attempt, candle closed above. Another attempt, candles closed above. Another attempt and the candle still closing above. So I need to keep this in mind when I'm looking at low time frame setups to know what price is trying to do here. At the same time, what we can see on the lower time frames is that price is in a little bit of a downward sloping channel. Okay, so there's a little bit of conflicting context with our high time frame support and the low time frame downtrend that we can see here. So if we have a look at this low time frame channel, we can connect these highs with these lows and we can see this channel has been respected yeah, perfectly. If we look at this on the weekly time frame, there is something that is really interesting. And that is that for, for the first time, we have closed a weekly candle above this top of the channel. Last week, we actually saw the retest and price is still trying to hold above this top of the channel. So once again, I have to keep in mind the bigger context and now this pattern that I can see here. Does it make sense to now look for a short trade aiming for lower prices while I'm seeing high time frame bullish signs? For me and my trading style, that doesn't make sense. 
There's one more thing that I'm keeping in mind and I want to show this on the daily time frame and that is inside chart champions we do have a theory or a playbook that looks at unfinished highs and we would call this at let me look at this exactly at 73,950 as a series of unfinished highs because what we can see here is that price is making lower highs However, these lower highs are pretty close to this overall high and that means there's a lot of resting liquidity up there because people who are shorting the retest can all still keep their stop loss up here, making this a nice liquidity zone while the liquidity to the downside has already been taken with this nice SFP down here. So you can clearly see I myself am leaning a little bit um, more bullish on Bitcoin and there's one more thing that I particularly like to look at and this is another local sign of strength that we have seen and this is we had a nice supply zone around 65 to 66 thousand year thousand dollars I'm sorry so this was supplies once twice three times we can see a nice break of this area we want to see candle closes this is what we got here and we got the perfect retest flipping previous supply into demand for another subsequent move to the upside so with that in mind I myself have enough reason to not be looking for short trades where we are at the moment at least not on the swing or day trades. For scalp trades, we can always find some trades inside here. But it does look like Bitcoin is trying to move higher. Now, that doesn't mean that the context can change, right? So I can always have a look at market structure. And for me, what I would use is this previous low right here. And if we, for example, see this drop taking the previous low, that means that we got to confirm market structure change. This is where I have to update my bias and see if I if price is indeed headed for lower levels or if I can buy the pullbacks. So for me, on where it where I'm standing today with the context that I am seeing, I am more interested in longs on pullbacks as there was no major sign of weakness yet. So let's have a look at some levels that I am interested in. So there is one daily level that I like in terms of confluence and that is coming in at 62,800. What I was previously saying was that I'm always looking for anchored view ups on the latest impulse. So if we just do that for Bitcoin here, so the latest impulse started on this retest. And we can see this anchored VWAP has been tested once, twice, three times, four times. And this anchored VWAP is now lining up with this daily level. So there's already two nice confluence areas around. Let's just call it 63,000 all the way down to 62,500. So it's a little bit of a zone, right? We can also add in another tool, which is the CC Fibonacci, which is lining up with this level as well. So that is already amazing confluence. We have three layers of confluence. But there is one more thing that I want to show you. It is a little bit more advanced, but if you want to learn more about it, we obviously teach that on our website at chartchampions.com. And that is the weekly volume profile. So I'm going to take you over to my ATA screen here. And what we can see around this level down here is that we have the following. So this is the weekly profile and I'm going to switch it to the monthly profile for a second. So let's do that here. And if we keep this level in mind at 63,000, call it a zone all the way down to 62,500. So this is now the monthly profile and we can see we have the previous month value area high lining up with the 63,000 level as well. And we do have the developing month value area low at 62,500. And we are already far into the month. So it's very likely that once this month closes, that we get an untested monthly value area low at 62,500 as well. So there is going to be some decent confluence around this area, which 
at least makes it worthwhile to set an alert at this area. I would not preset this level because we don't know if the context is going to change, but this is an area I am looking at for a nice long trade. So what we can also do is have a look at the more local price action. And there's one more area that I am interested in on Bitcoin on the lower time frame. For me, lower time frame doesn't mean like the 5 to 15 minute time frame. I'm looking at the 1 hour to 4 hour. So for some day trading scenarios. There's another daily level that I really like, which is sitting at 66,500. So we here, once again, we have confluence with the daily and this value area low. That in itself is already a nice confluence, but I am going to show you the theory that I was previously mentioning once again. So here, if I switch it back to the weekly profile, and this is something that we are teaching inside Chart Champion. So I know this is going to confuse a few people, but it does make sense to pay attention to these weekly and monthly profiles based on volume. Okay, so what we can see here is pretty interesting. This is the current weekly profile that we are trading. Okay, but if we look at last week and the week before, we actually have two weeks of the same weekly value area low, making this a pretty interesting and significant level. So what price is trying to do here is to keep price above this value area low. That means that this on a retest, as this is also an untested weekly value area low, can offer some pretty nice support. And this is something I am looking at as additional confluence on this daily that I was already mentioning here. So for me, there are two areas of interest for a long trade, while I myself am not really looking for any short trades at the moment. What I prefer to do is to wait for either higher prices to come which in the best case scenario is the 73,950 area. Or what I'm going to do is to react to weakness. So what I would do constantly is look for price to hit resistance areas. And then I will be looking at market structure to make an informed decision if I'm interested in a short trade or not. But what I'm not going to do is trying to time the exact top while all of this high, high time frame context is pointing towards higher. Okay, so I don't need to predict where exactly Bitcoin is going to top out. Instead, I'm going to react to what the market is showing me. And that is what's giving me the best results. So while that already covered a Bitcoin and that was yeah, already offering two trades, I'm actually going to set this alert right here so that I don't miss this trade. And um, let's also have a look at Ethereum. So Ethereum is one of my favorite altcoins that I'm trading. And I, by the way, am hosting a weekly altcoin stream where our members at Chart Champions can tag me in the chat and request altcoins they want me to look at. And yeah, Ethereum is always one of the best ones. So um, we had some pretty amazing trades on Ethereum lately. And funny enough, I was hosting a Thursday, um, an altcoin stream last Thursday, and this is the setup that I shared. I was looking at this weekly and weekly naked point of control on this value area low. Once again, at least three layers of confluence, and we can see that level has been hit over the weekend. We already got a bounce of four and a half percent. So this is not too bad, but obviously many missed this trade. And how would I react if I missed this trade? I'm going to explain you how I would go along if I did not get this entry down here because I was not trading or I simply missed my altcoin update. So um, let's have a look at this. And what I would do is definitely not long up here. Okay, if we look at this risk to reward tool, that is significantly impacting this risk to reward ratio. Okay, this is nothing I would like to do. This entry down here was valid, but however, I need to look at something else to find a new, new entry. And what I would always do if I missed an initial entry is look at the lower time frames and search for additional signs of strength. So in this example, 
there is something that is pretty obvious. And what we can see here is that we had a little bit of a consolidation range before we dropped into my target. Okay, but now I need to use this as my reference point in terms of market structure. So that is our previous series of four hour highs. So in order for me to compound the existing long trade or get into a new trade on Ethereum, I need to see another layer of confirmation, meaning a market structure change, at least an attempt to be able to long a retest. This would look something along this line. So I want to see price taking this seri the series of previous four hour highs. Then I want to see the retest. This can obviously be into the CC. Okay, if we do this here, this would even be a little bit of a lower retest like this. Then um, I could always use the CC as my retest type of entry on Ethereum to still get into this trade. But what we have to make sure as traders is that we never feel tempted to chase trades that already moved far away from our entry. So this is already 4% above this entry. And in my opinion, it's not good practice to long up here just to or in FOMO to miss this move on Ethereum. It's always better to miss a trade than taking a trade based off um, weak confluence or based off chasing a move that has already happened. Okay, so this is how I am going to approach Ethereum. On Ethereum, if we look at the context, we can see that Ethereum, and this was also one of the reasons why I was looking at this trade, is maintaining this series of higher lows. Okay, Ethereum is also telling us it does not want to break lower, at least for now. And that can obviously change, but for now there is some signs of strength on Ethereum. And one of the targets that I have in mind is this previous high at 2820. It doesn't mean that we have to go and shoot for this level straight away, but this is at least a high time frame target for me. And I am once again a little bit more conservative on short trades up here. So I'm not really looking at a short trade scenario for now unless I get more data and new context. So I prefer to stick with this long trade and um, yeah, wait for additional weakness as I was explaining on Bitcoin, such as market structure changes before I'm even looking at short trades on Ethereum. And as promised, I will also have a look at one more altcoin and that is going to be Popcat. So I can see Popcat all over the place. People love trading Popcat. We have seen some amazing volatility on Popcat. If we look at this on the uh, daily time frame, what a nice uptrend that has been. So, and there is some decent volatility on Popcat. So why not have a look at it and um, see if there's a trading opportunity. So what we can see on Popcat or what I can see is that we have seen a pretty nice sign of strength. So what I was already explaining on Bitcoin or I already mentioned supply and demand zones and we can see the exact same here on Popcat. So we have this pretty nice Popcat, uh, pretty nice, sorry, supply zone at around one dollar. So here we can see it was tested once, rejected, twice, rejected, three times, four times and then we finally broke out of this range. And whenever we see that, this is a massive, massive sign of strength. Okay. So this is the context. Price is still maintaining a series of higher lows. We could almost draw a channel up here because this is so clean. Let's do that real quick. Connecting these highs and these lows and we can see this upward sloping channel has been respected perfectly. Look at the, the bottom of this uh, channel here. It's been tested once, twice, three times, four times and every time we tested it, uh, testing it, it's still holding. So that is very, very important in terms of the context of what Popcat is trying to do. So does it make sense to be looking for short trades on Popcat when seeing strength across, uh, across time frames? For me, that doesn't make sense. I'm not going to do it. If I miss a short trade, I don't care. But I am only looking for, trend, uh, for trades that are going with the trend. And in this instance, what I found on Popcat is a nice weekly level, which is sitting at 1.37. 
Okay, I was looking for additional confluence. We can always draw a fixed range for this latest little bit of a consolidation range here. And what I was seeing was that this weekly is perfectly lining up with this range point of control. So the idea for this trade is that Popcat is still in this uptrend and all we do is a retest of the point of control doing a failed rotation which is then looking for a new high to be made. So that is the context that is going on or that is the idea that's going on in my head. Once again, if that's new to you, if you don't know about rotations, failed rotations and what I'm talking about, this is something we teach at Chart Champions as well. And this is a pretty amazing um, theory that I'm going to or I'm applying here. Besides this weekly end point of control confluence, we also have a naked weekly point of control lining up with this level, which is at the 1.4 price level. And we can obviously add in some FIPS as well. We have some nice confluence with the CC. However, I prefer to look at the CCW for this, as this is more of a ladder entry type of entry that I would use here. And we can see brilliant confluence with the 618, 70%, as well as the 786. You can see that down here. So for me, all of these confluences make it worthwhile to look at this setup on Popcat. At least I'm going to set an alert. That doesn't mean that I will be 100% taking this trade. What I am always looking at is candle closes. So for this entry as a little bit of a bonus, that is what I like to do in my altcoin streams is to even ahead of time already um, d tell our members what entry criteria I'm going to use for this specific trade. I'm going to do that with you um, as well today. And that is a four hour candle close above the level would signal a long trade entry for me. This obviously is no financial advice. This is just for educational purposes only and what I myself am looking at. So with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this YouTube video. This is what I'm looking at on Bitcoin, Ethereum and Popcat. So yeah, I hope you could learn something from this video and let me know what you all think. Do you want me to include more altcoins into these videos? And yeah, let's make some great profits alongside each other. So I hope you all enjoyed this and see you next time. Goodbye.